it's Max from Maxine's Little Nook, and today we're gonna talk about the Farseer trilogy. So, uh, let's start with why I wanted to read these books. So, initially, I didn't know anything about these books except for they have awesome covers, and every time I would walk into the sci fi and fantasy section in a bookstore, they would always be there, and I would always get attracted to the design, but I never really pick them up. I buy books based out of covers sometimes. I think I saw one of my favorite booktubers review one of Robin Hobb's books. It wasn't like the Farseer trilogy. I think it was like uh, the Tawny Man's trilogy or something. I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. So I stopped watching the, the video and then I ended up kind of going back to a bookstore. Uh, when I went back to a bookstore, I picked up the first book of the Farseer trilogy. A little bit of a background with my reading taste. So I usually read a lot of YA fantasy. Uh, I did dabble in a bit of uh, sci-fi fantasy, like adult sci-fi and adult fantasy. A couple of times last year and this year, I've read um, Name of the Wind, I've read a couple of Dune books. And I did read, I think I tried to read The Silmarillion, but that was unsuccessful. But anyway, um, so, yeah, so I'm I'm not really, um, of course I know Lord of the Rings, but it's mostly based on the movies, not really the books because I haven't really got the chance to, well, I'm not brave enough to read the books yet. I don't have much knowledge or experience going into the Farseer trilogy when it comes to adult fantasy. I'm not like all those kind of seasoned readers where they have their built-on opinions or like they already have established um, tastes in fantasy. So I literally like I feel like I came in in this like, barely knowing anything so and expecting like I wasn't expecting anything like I was like I had my expectations really low just because I'm afraid that I would as soon as I hit like 100 pages of I would be bored out of my mind but um the Farseer tr trilogy and Robin Hobb has actually kind of uh, managed to capture my attention so Robin Hobb has captured my attention for so long that despite having we all know that she has she writes really ro long prose beautifully executed prose but it is quite long and sometimes i would say book two and book three are too long for its own good you know like it could be a little bit shorter just so the plot would start moving but yeah it's her writing style is so good that i just could not stop i couldn't put it down at all so uh i am going to talk about spoilers so if you're uh if you don't want that if you haven't read the books yet i would highly recommend you to just stop here as a very new um fa adult fantasy reader i would suggest um go in go in if you're afraid of reading adult fantasy and you think that robin hobbs books are quite like a little bit too thick for our liking just go ahead like just read it it's amazing it's it's great i've enjoyed i've thoroughly enjoyed this series so go ahead and read it, yeah. So now for this, uh, we're gonna talk about my favorite characters in the book. So first of all, let's talk about Assassin's Apprentice. And can I just say, Robin Hobb, why? Why do you have to kill three dogs? Well, technically one dog I thought was dead, but then he was alive at the end, but then we end on that note. We end on a dog dying. Why would we end on that note? Wh who hurt you? Who hurt you <laughs> that you would hurt people like that? <laughs> That's my only- that that was like, uh, why are there so many dog bets here? I can't. Let's talk about our main character, Fitz. Uh, we start with him uh, being six years old in this book. One thing I didn't understand about him is he kind of doesn't remember anything about his past, right? I'm pretty sure you guys kind of have a very early memory of your childhood. At least you know who your mother, your father is. But like but the fact that this boy absolutely doesn't know anything about her, his parents, like Fitz doesn't even know if what his mom looks like or his mom's called like. He doesn't even know what his name is. It's kind of odd. And I don't know if I missed that throughout reading the series, if we do kind of realize that- I know that his mom's a mountain- like, mountain woman, uh, but 
we don't know why he doesn't remember. So uh, maybe I missed it. Can you guys like leave a comment down below? Like if I actually missed it in this series or will it be discussed further throughout the, you know, the whole The Elderling series? Yeah, so Fitz, we meet Fitz uh, as a young boy. And I would say like the one thing that really got to me, the reason why I could not stop reading was when, I don't know, I forgot who, was it Regal or was it Birch who asked like, what's your name boy? And then he just said, boy. I, and that's the time when I was like, okay, I'm invested. We'll keep going. Like, I want to know how sad we can get after that sentence. By the way, spoiler alert, we do. Fitz is such an interesting character from the beginning. I remember writing down notes about like what I thought Fitz was. Since it's written in a first person perspective, sometimes I feel like I can't trust Fitz as a narr narrator, especially when he was like too young to be trusted. See, we all know that children are more egocentric and it does show on, Robin's Hob uh, on Robin Hobb's writing that he is quite egocentric, that everything needs to be revolving around him that that everybody's out there to hate on him or everybody's out there to kind of use him which is fair enough they do but the fact that the first bit or a couple of chapters in i was not trusting Fitz's narration that much he was whingy but not whingy enough for me to actually stop or stop reading even though he felt like an untrustworthy narrator the fact that he that Fitz has a lot of failures made me kind of you know i can give this guy a chance like let's just keep reading and it did pay off like uh by the end of the third book absolutely just adore Fitz I adore Fitz even though you know like a lot of people don't like Fitz I personally like Fitz so yeah my uh, my second favorite character is probably Burridge the father that Fitz never deserved the amount of grief that Fitz give Burridge is just too much like sometimes I wish like I wish for Fitz to just run away and not give Burridge any more headaches because I swear to god like he is such a kind man what i like about robin hobbs writing she consistently develops characters not not just the main character every single side character has a development that we don't see it goes off page but then they come back and it's just it's exquisitely done and the reason why I think I am so obsessed with this this series, Burrich, we, we kind of um, get to meet him. He's kind of this strong figure. And then at the end of book three, you are just, I was weeping. I was literally weeping. So um, another character that we meet is um, Fitz's love interest, who is Molly. And Molly does fall in love with Fitz and then they have a romantic relationship. Then again, because of who Fitz is, they can't be together. And the fact that Burridge and Molly end up together and have a family together. It's just so they deserve that. It was written so well that you know they both deserve a happy ending. And it's it was one of the most satisfying things that Robin Hobb has ever done. Sorry, I'm kind of I feel like I'm going off like like I'm going through book one and then book two and then book three, but to be honest, like it's just really well written that I can't explain this this series. I can't explain these series without kind of, you know, just melding them into one incoherent review, really. it's I don't think it's a review. I think it's more like just my feelings on what made these series or what is in, in these books that made me fall in love with every single character. It's amazing. So another thing that I think was the most satisfying thing in, um, in Royal Assassin, I think, was so one of the prime examples of Robin Hobb's um, character development that we see that she's a side character. She gave off such a satisfying development in the end is uh, Lady Grace. So I know she's from a different kind of duchy. Uh, she's from a different duchy. She's the Duchess and initially that duchy wouldn't man the towers. So you, you, they couldn't see any of the Red Ship Raiders coming in from that side of the kingdom. The fact that like Fitz meets her in the kitchens in the middle of the night when her dog was choking on a fish bone and then Fitz kind of gave her an advice well, after saving her dog receives advice from Fitz that you know uh, if you don't feel comfortable being a duchess it's because people don't see you as a duchess yet like change who you are stop wearing jewelry fund fund the people who are trying to kind of man the towers to watch over the shores and stuff so like that, hap that all happens in book one. And in book two, in Royal Assassin, we then kind of see them again, like um, Lady Grace and Fitz meets again in like page 490. I'll read you guys a bit of it. Bear with me. 
She presented me with a token of her favor before I left. It still makes me smile to think on it. A tiny pin in the shape of a fish's bones. I had this made to remind me. I should like you to have it now. She herself seldom wore jewelry anymore, she told me. She handed it to me on a balcony on a dark evening when the lights of Duke Kelvar's watchtowers glittered like diamonds against the black sky. I, I swear to God, that made me smile. Like, genuinely smile. Because, like, she was one of this character. She was basically like Fitz's first mission kind of to escort Prince Verity at that time to kind of go deal with this duchy because it seems like they're not doing the job. On the second book, he goes to visit again on a more diplomatic kind of celebration thing and then he meets Lady Grace again and she has de like developed into an amazing duchess and that happened off page. It's just, it's amazing how Robin Hobb does this and I kind of re now realize why a lot of people are obsessed with the, her books. I feel like, to be honest, if I continue on talking to you guys about my favorite characters, my favorite scenes in the books, uh, this video would go on forever. But you know what? I think I should wrap it up with one of my favorite um, moments of the book, which is, which I think I've already mentioned before, is Birch and Molly ending up together. Uh, Fitz, he uses the skill to see what happens to Molly and Birch. I kind of understood what Fitz kind of tried to feel or like what Robin Hobb tried to make Fitz feel and how she conveyed that through her words is the fact that, yeah, Burrich and Molly, he both, like Fitz loves Molly romantically and Burrich is basically his dad. Like, like he is his father figure, a, an amazing friend. Burrich would do anything for Fitz. But the fact that in the end, they would both be happy is enough for Fitz to be. You know what? Fair. Like, fair. And I think that the fact that Fitz doesn't get the girl in the end, Thank God! It's good the fact that Molly and Burrich are both amazing characters and have done and sacrificed so much for Fitz. And for them to end up together and have a beautiful family together, being safe together, is just probably the best ending to, a, to side characters that you'll ever get. And I think that is the reason why I can't get over these books is because it's just, it's so satisfying to read them. Yeah, I'm, I can't wait to to just keep going and keep reading more Robin Hobb. I feel I feel like this the, this shelf's just gonna be filled with Robin Hobb. If you wanna have discussions about specific characters that you hate and love, please feel free to comment down below and I would love to talk about them. Like, let's talk about that bitch Regal. Let's talk about that bitch Will. Let's talk about everyone. Cause girl, I want to talk. But yeah, I feel like there's not enough time in the world for me to just keep going about these books and I'm mind blown. Sorry if I haven't been too active on on my booktube channel for for the month of August. It's because like I felt like August just went by so fast and I have too much work to do. And yeah, I will wrap this up. Thank you so much for the people who have stuck around. The 70 of you are just amazing. If you like this video and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and like this video for more. I will hopefully get more updates. I would probably have a whole list of books that I want to read this autumn. But yeah, see you later. Thank you so much. Bye.